Hi, my name is Whitney Blankenship. I will be doing this presentation for Dr. Valdez's research course at Gannon University, and today we'll be talking about Prisma flow diagrams. So Prisma in general stands for the Preferred Reporting Items for Systematic Reviews and Meta-Analyses, and they have created a guideline that you can follow step-by-step -step to create your systematic review and a specific formula for their flow diagrams. So Prisma's goals are to ensure a transparent and complete report of whatever you're doing your review on. So it could be an outcome measure or a treatment. And then the second goal would be to assess the positives and the negatives. So the flow diagram specifically is a visual that would map out information regarding the number of records that you've identified in the literature searches out of whatever databases you've decided to choose, and then the number of studies that you included and excluded, and that information would come from your methods section, and then the reasons for exclusion. So as you read through the article titles and the abstracts, and finally as you do your final read through of all of the articles that you've chosen, you'll continually make that number that you're going to be reviewing smaller and smaller. So the flow diagram will take you from probably a very large number within the literature search to a smaller number for your actual review. So here's a general overview of a blank flow diagram. And um, so I want to kind of direct your attention over here to the left side. So at the very top is basically just identification of what does the literature say about the topic that you have. So that's going to be all of your databases are going to be at the top. I'll show you a more specific example in a little bit. And then you're going to screen those articles. So that's when you'll read the titles and the abstracts to make sure that they follow along with what your topic is and then eligibility. And this is where you're gonna line up those articles with your method section and your inclusion and exclusion criteria. Each step of the way, recording how many articles have been taken out. So eventually, you're gonna start with a bigger number up at the top, and once duplicates are removed, you'll continue to exclude until you get to your final number, which is the articles that you'll be reviewing. This is the link for the Prisma flow diagram formula, basically. It's a very simple format that I'll be showing you in a moment that you can fill out and it will actually generate your flow diagram for you. And this is what the finished product will look like. So this is mine, for example. I have my databases at the top, Cochrane Library, CINAHL, PubMed, PsychNet, and Medline. And below that are the dates that I have searched and then the citations from each search. So all of these citations add up to over 613, but these are non-duplicate citations. So basically what that means is when you search multiple databases, there's a possibility that you're going to run into the same article multiple times. So this number is reflective of each individual article, not repeating titles. And then moving down a little bit lower, you can see that I've read through all of their titles or abstracts and removed 545, and I'm left with 68. Then after I've read the full text of all of those, I removed 48 after that full text screen. And then when I started extracting data from those articles, I ended up realizing that three were not what I was looking for. So those were also removed. That left me with 16 articles that I included in my study personally. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you now what that site looks like, which is right here. And very basic formula here. We'll start with the title. Um, that's pretty simple, straightforward. 
and then right below it is going to be all your databases. So you'll start with your name, the date range searched, and the number of citations that you reached. And then you can continue to add more databases. I think there's a total of, yep, 26 total. That's a lot of databases. Um, I specifically used five, I believe. And you'll just continue to add those below. I would recommend tracking that somehow, whether it's through an Excel spreadsheet or through a reference organizer. I'll show you which reference organizer I personally used after this. And then if you move a little bit lower, you'll see the number of non-duplicate citations. So that's the number that I was talking about where each individual article is different. There's no duplicates involved. And then you have the number of articles excluded. So it's very important to read these pretty carefully and make sure that your math adds up. That would be a really simple thing that would probably have your article turned around if you went to try to publish and your articles didn't match up within your flow diagram. So as you move down the number of articles you've retrieved finally and then excluded after full text screen. So say you took 45 out of the 65 and you're left with 20. And then let's say you were looking at those 20 and you realized two of them still did not match during the data extraction and you're left with 18. And then at the very bottom you get to choose what format you want it in. I would recommend either a PNG, a PDF, or a JPEG, whatever you feel most comfortable using when you're importing that into your Word document. So like I talked about, I use a reference organizer for my systematic review, and that really helped me narrow down the amount of duplicates that I had and helped me keep organized. So there's a lot of free ones out there and also a lot of expensive ones, but I use Zotero. So this is what the interface looks like. It's pretty simple. There's a library that you have and you can organize it by folders. So this folder is specifically for the Medline search that I did. And I have all of my search terms right here. So I can easily go in and see which articles came up when I did those searches. And when I go to duplicate items, I've already done all of my duplicates and merged them, but I unmerged one of them so you could see what it looked like. So this is a case where this article came up in two different databases. So if I click that, it will highlight both of them and I can just click merge two items and that goes away. So once all of those items are removed, I'm able to see more clearly how many articles I'm looking at at the very beginning and can narrow it down from there. So I would definitely recommend becoming familiar with some sort of application like this um, or an Excel spreadsheet if you're really good with Excel, just to keep track of those things. Sometimes uh, different publishing companies want to be able to see how you got to the number and want to make sure that you really did a thorough search. So this is a way that you can show that. Um, I have not deleted any of this because my article has not been published yet, but if you have any questions specifically about Zotero or flow diagrams, feel free to let me know, and I hope this was beneficial.